In this video, I'll be tasked with collecting all 12 custom Eyes of Ender in order to open the portal and defeat the Frozen Ender Dragon. This will require me to not only locate a ton of custom structures, but also to take down some very powerful bosses. Will I be able to accomplish all of this within my final 100 days in this apocalyptic blizzard? It's time to find out. So on day 201, my adventure continued. But before I could get started exploring and fighting bosses for those custom Eyes of Ender, there were a couple of other things I needed to get done. First, I decided to check in on those villagers that I had found in that igloo at the end of the previous 100 days. I wanted to convert one of them into a librarian that traded mending, since none of my current armor, weapons, or tools were enchanted with that. But apparently, getting a librarian that trades mending is not the most common thing in the world, because I pretty much spent the entirety of this day just replacing that lectern over and over and over again to refresh the trades before I was finally able to get one that traded mending. But this librarian wasn't going to just trade me these mending books for free. I was still going to need to come up with some emeralds in order to actually trade. So I decided to convert that other villager in the igloo into a Fletcher, which would offer me a trade where I could give him sticks in exchange for emeralds. In order to get the amount of emeralds I was looking for though, I was admittedly going to need a lot of sticks. Thankfully though, my mob grinder had produced so many bones in the last 100 days that I essentially had access to infinite bone meal and could instantly grow as many trees as I wanted to. As I continued to grind out these sticks though, I also teleported back to the igloo and set up both the villagers with some beds. That way, each morning their trade amounts would be refreshed. The next day, I came back and found one of my captives trying to break free using those ladders that led out of the igloo, which obviously I was not about to allow, so I broke all the ladders beneath him and dragged him back down with me. Then, as opposed to getting mending on all of my important items right away, I actually decided to use 20 of the emeralds in order to spawn another baby villager inside of my base. I didn't really have any immediate purpose for this new villager, but I just had a feeling that it was going to come in handy at some point throughout my journey for these custom eyes of Ender. And now that I had that replacement, I grinded up some more sticks to trade for emeralds and finally got my first mending book, which I decided to apply to my moonstone leggings since my chest plate had a conflicting enchant on it called reforming. And I also found out that that Sharpness 5 Ancient Tome that I previously had thought was no good actually was insanely OP. Because when combined with a Sharpness 5 book, it would create a Sharpness 6 book. In order to make the book though, it was going to be pretty pricey, costing a whopping 35 enchantment levels. As expensive as that is though, I'm sure most of you agree with me that it's still very worth the price. So I spent the next two days just grinding mobs in my mob farms for XP. And finally, at the end of day 208, I was able to create my Sharpness 6 God Book. I decided to hold off on applying it to anything though for the time being because this was a pretty rare item to have and I didn't want to just waste it on one of my current swords and then regret that later on. So I chose to instead begin my explorations now because not only was I going to have to do this anyway in order to get all 12 of these eyes and travel to the end, but I also figured there was a pretty good chance that I would find something along the way that would help me make a sword worthy of these enchants. First though, I had to make a quick little trip to the warp forest in the nether in order to gather some ender pearls for some more of those stone teleporters because the last thing I wanted was to get trapped somewhere thousands of blocks away from my base while exploring. I made it back to my bunker the next day, crafted some of those waystones, and also threw a mending book on my adjusted cooling helm, since this trip to the nether had made me realize it was arguably my most valuable item, and it also had really low durability, so it would definitely benefit from the mending enchant. And then on day 211, I stepped outside into that snowy wasteland once again. Except this time around, things were looking a little bit different, because ever since I slayed Frostmaw, that very dense fog I was having to deal with before had pretty much entirely cleared up. As I continued walking, I stumbled upon a tiny little house, and when I went inside to explore, I found a mob spawner and some loot chests in the basement. The loot in this house though was admittedly kind of terrible, but it gave me hope that maybe I could find another house down the line that would have something really OP. And that wish almost immediately came true, because as I continued to explore, I found another loot chest that had a ton of crazy OP items, including a looting 3 tome which I could combine with that Sharpness 6 God Book I made a couple days earlier to create a Sharpness 6 Looting 4 God Book, which was obviously just way too good to continue to pass up on using. So I decided to use one of those netherite ingots I had previously found in that haunted mansion to create a netherite sword to apply this book to. But in order to both create this book and apply it to my new sword, I was going to need to get to level 35 not once, 
but twice. So as you can probably guess, I spent quite a bit of time grinding XP levels. Getting to level 35 is no joke, especially when you have to do it twice back to back. Finally though, on day 216, I hit level 35 for the second time and created that very overpowered netherite sword. And now that I was feeling a lot more powerful, it was finally time to begin searching for my first custom Eye of Ender. Well, technically my third custom Eye of Ender, because I had actually already found the first two in the previous 100 days. The first of these being the Cold Eye, which I found in that igloo where those two villagers are located now. And the second one being the Corrupted Eye, which I found while exploring that haunted mansion that had those netherite ingots and a bunch of other crazy OP loot. Anyways though, I decided that for my first eye, I would try and hunt down a black eye, which could only be found in buried treasure. Which meant that I would first need to find a shipwreck somewhere out in the ocean and get a treasure map. Thankfully, I was able to create these handy little items called Greater Eyes of Ender, which would point to any custom structure of your choosing. So I set one to point to a shipwreck, threw it up in the air, and followed the direction it pointed to. And after a full day of walking, I managed to find a tiny little shipwreck under the frozen ocean. It didn't look like there was going to be much loot inside of this thing though, so I was just praying I would get lucky and find a treasure map. And much to my surprise, there was a treasure map inside, which was a absolute lifesaver. And even better, after taking a look at the map, it seemed like the buried treasure was super close by. So I followed it to the nearby shore, dug up the buried treasure, and inside found the black eye, leaving me now with nine more custom eyes to collect. Next, I set my sights on getting the old eye, which could only be found in desert pyramids. So I switched my greater eye of ender to point to a desert pyramid and began following its direction. And as I continued to look for this desert temple, I ended up coming across a massive abandoned city and decided to search around and see what I could find. Initially, I thought it was just going to be a bunch of empty buildings that had some mobs inside, but after clearing out one of the areas, I discovered some loot chests. And inside one of these chests, I found the rogue eye, which was very unexpected because those are only supposed to spawn in jungle temples. But hey, I wasn't going to complain because that was just one less structure I needed to locate and it brought me up to four custom eyes in total out of the 12 I needed. I continued to explore some of the buildings in this lost city thinking that maybe some of the other loot chests would be just as stacked as that one was, but I ended up not really finding anything too interesting and decided to go back to looking for that desert temple. Eventually, I crossed into a desert biome, and I knew it meant that I must be close to the temple. All of a sudden, though, my entire screen turned pink, and I began being dragged in a direction completely out of my control. I quickly realized that I was being serenaded by sirens, and although these things may seem innocent at first, I knew exactly what was about to happen as soon as I got close. I attacked the first chance I got before allowing them to do the same, and thanks to the power of that Sharpness 6 netherite sword, I was able to take them out pretty easily. And later that day, I found the desert pyramid, so I dropped down inside to loot it. And luckily, there was an old eye inside, bringing me to the almost halfway point after just a few days of searching, really. The next day, I made another quick trip back to the warp forest because I needed more ender pearls. But this trip really showed me just how OP that looting four enchant was because I was getting a ton of pearls every enderman kill. And then I decided that for my next custom eye, I would go after the magical eye, which could only be dropped from killing an evoker. I didn't really want to run like 10,000 blocks though to find a woodlands mansion, so my plan instead was to locate a pillager outpost, kill the leader, and then use the bad omen effect I would get from that in order to start a raid. When I finally managed to get to the outpost though, I was greeted by a total of zero pillagers, so it looked like that plan wasn't going to work and I was just going to have to walk to a mansion anyway. Which is exactly what I started doing on the next day. And I actually ended up being super glad that I did because I found a ton of stuff on this day. First, I randomly ran into an Isolager out in some massive mountains biome and took him out and got a Wand of Freezing. And I also found both a Cyclops and Dragon's Den along the way as well that I was planning on revisiting later once I was a little bit stronger. And these discoveries just kept going because right after that, I also found a village, which would have been really, really useful if I was still trying to start that raid. But you know what? I'd probably still be able to find some sort of use for it later down the line. This mansion was really, really far away though because I continued walking for another three days in total before finally at the very end of day 200, 131 I arrived at the mansion. And the next morning, after getting a good night's sleep, I went inside. I decided to swap out the extendo grip in my offhand though for a shield of strength, which was a special item I had found that would give me extra damage. As I explored the rooms on the first floor of the mansion, I found a couple of vindicators walking around, but I was able to take them out pretty easily. 
And then I made my way up the stairs and almost immediately was attacked by a pretty large group of Vindicators as well as a skilled zombie. This fight required a little more strategy than the ones on the first floor, but I was still able to take out all the enemies with relative ease. As I peered into one of the nearby rooms though, I spotted a Vindicator and Evoker just chilling at the back, so I went inside to take him out. The Evoker spawned some Vexes and the Vindicator charged at me, but once again, these things proved to just be a minor annoyance and I took him out pretty quickly. And then I charged in on the Evoker, expecting at least somewhat of a challenging fight, but I actually ended up taking him out in literally just two hits. So I guess my sharp six netherite sword and this new shield of strength were a pretty nasty combination. It took me a second to take out the rest of those annoying little vexes, but once I finally got a chance to look at my inventory, I saw that the evoker had dropped both a magical eye and a totem of undying, which was awesome. Because this was my first ever totem of undying in this world, and the magical eye now brought us up to the halfway point in my custom eye journey. I swapped out the shield for the totem in my offhand just for that little extra bit of safety and continued clearing out some vindicators in the mansion. I also found another room that had an evoker inside, so I quickly took him out for another totem and that extra magical eye. I cleared out the rest of the rooms in the mansion just to make sure I wasn't missing any vindicators or evokers because both the emeralds and totems were pretty nice to get, but once I was sure there was not a single mob left inside, I headed home and went to sleep for the night. I had once again used my last waystone during this little adventure though and needed to get my hands on another one, but I was kind of tired of constantly going down my mineshaft to get the lava for obsidian, so instead I decided to set up a little dripstone farm that would automatically generate lava for me to make my life a little bit easier whenever I needed to craft these things. And then I started my quest for my next custom eye, the Guardian Eye, which would require me to locate an ocean monument and defeat the Elder Guardian inside. As I started heading for one though, I ended up coming across a mine shaft and decided to go down and see what was inside. As I started to make my way through this mine shaft, I quickly realized this was no ordinary mine shaft. This thing was absolutely massive. I continued to just follow the rail tracks down to the different ends to see everything this place had to offer. And at one of the dead ends, I ran into this massive emerald vein, which seemingly had like 50 ore all piled up in one little spot. As I was mining it though, I was suddenly attacked by a lava monster and another one of those drowned mini bosses at the same time. I took out the lava monster first because those guys are much weaker and then started working on the drowned mini boss. And since these guys are immune to fire, they're a little bit trickier to take out because you have to find another way to consecrate them so they're not just invincible. Thankfully, that's where that silver sword I crafted all the way back at like the beginning of the 100 days comes into play because I could just alternate between my netherite sword and that silver sword in order to both consecrate this drowned mini boss and also still do a decent amount of damage to him. Once I finally managed to take him out, he dropped some shiny new pants for me, and it turns out the chest nearby that he was guarding had a god apple inside. So I collected that and then mined the rest of that emerald vein. The next day, I continued to clear out the mine shaft, but didn't really find anything else too interesting, so I went back on my search for that ocean monument. And as I was walking across the ice, my scout enchant lit up a guardian beneath my feet, so I knew the ocean monument must be close by. And when I broke the ice beneath my feet and jumped down into the water, the ocean monument was literally directly in front of me. As I started to swim towards it though, I was all of a sudden attacked by a massive sea serpent out of nowhere. And then things got even worse when a second sea serpent swam out of nowhere and also started attacking me. I was taking massive amounts of damage, so I quickly ate one of my god apples to buy myself some time. I knew the only way I was going to survive this situation was if I could manage to take out both sea serpents, because there was no way I could make it back to the surface at this point. So I did my best to get in as many hits as possible with my netherite sword to try and kill these things. But they they managed to drop me all the way down to four hearts once again, so I was forced to eat another one of my enchanted golden apples. And much to my surprise, I managed to take out the first one, got a couple more hits on the second one, and took that one out as well. I hastily grabbed all the loot they dropped and then placed one of my waystones on the surface and used it to teleport home so I could have a chance to breathe. And while I was here, I decided to brew some water breathing and cold resistance potions for my trip back to the monument the next day. Cause that near death experience was scary enough. I wanted to minimize the odds of one happening again on the next day. And so the next day after taking those precautions, I went back to the ocean monument. And I didn't really feel like wasting any time fighting the regular guardian, so I just broke directly into the place where I knew the elder guardian would be. When I saw him though, I noticed that his entire body looked pretty much frozen over, so I guess this apocalyptic blizzard had hit him pretty hard too. This fight though was nowhere near as deadly as my one with the sea serpents though, and after just a few hits from my netherite sword, I defeated him and obtained 
the Guardian Eye, marking my seventh out of the 12 custom eyes I was on this journey to get. And then I decided that it'd be kind of a fun idea to commemorate both the Elder Guardian defeat as well as my near-death experience with those sea serpents by creating some sort of build in my bunker, which at the moment, and I'm sure you all agree with this, is very boring and kind of ugly looking. And after giving it some thought, I chose to make a storage room because to be honest with you, my current chest organization situation was a complete disaster, frankly. So first, I made a trip back to that ocean monument and started collecting all the different types of blocks there because, well, that's what I was gonna use to make this build. I also really wanted to get some sea lanterns to put in the build because I just always think they look nice. So I made a silk touch pickaxe and went back as well the next day to grab some of those. And then after collecting them, I got started on the actual build. And after finishing the rough design for the room, I gotta say, I think it looked pretty decent. Of course, this was gonna be a storage room though, so I had to actually start chopping down some trees to get the wood for the chests. And once all of the storage chests were down, I also decided to make some item frames for them to make the organization aspect even better. But then it was time to actually organize, and it was not gonna be an easy task. Because at the moment, I pretty much just had random chests spread out all over my base with well, a bunch of random items in them. So it took me three whole days of moving and organizing items before I finally had it done. And it honestly still wasn't perfect, but it would get the job done. Then I set my sights on my next custom eye, the lost eye, which could only be found in mine shafts. So this meant I was gonna have to do a bit of adventuring underground once again, which I found out in the previous 100 days can be pretty dangerous. So as part of my prep, I equipped an extra hearts belt that I had gotten while looting that pillager outpost from earlier to kind of help protect myself a little bit in case I did get attacked by anything. And just for fun, I also threw this cool looking red rune on my netherite sword to make it look a little bit more interesting. And the next day while exploring underground, I ran into another mine shaft. But when I went to open a chest to see if I could find that lost eye inside, the chest suddenly started trying to kill me. Luckily, I was able to take it out and it wasn't crazy powerful or anything, but my god, I was definitely gonna be a little bit nervous every time I opened a chest from that point forward. Then, as if this mineshaft wasn't already scary enough, I ran into an ice elemental at one of the dead ends. But this was no ordinary ice elemental. This was an ice elemental mini boss which means that it was much stronger than usual. At first, I was super scared of this thing because even just the regular ones have caused me enough problems in the past. But after taking a couple hits at it, I realized I could pretty easily just keep it stuck in the ceiling and it couldn't really do much. But then after continuing to hit it for like two minutes straight and it still not being dead, I was starting to think it might be invincible. But I was determined to see what kind of loot this thing was gonna drop. And finally, after like four minutes of constant swinging, I killed it and was not disappointed because it dropped a moonstone helmet and moonstone leggings. And on top of that, the helmet had both adjusted cooling and mending already on it. So the helmet was like a god tier upgrade version of the scuba helmet I was already wearing. So even though that boss took way too freaking long to kill, it was well worth the wait. The moonstone helmet was pretty badly damaged though. So before continuing to explore, I went back to my base and grinded some XP levels for a little bit to repair it. But when I finally got back to exploring, I found what appeared to be a glitched mine shaft above a little cave spider spawner. And when I went to open the chest that was there, I found the lost eye. Meaning I was now only four eyes away from having all 12 of the custom eyes. And when I made it back to my bunker, I decided to start working on a really OP item called the Blood Pendant that I had been wanting for a while now, but up until finding that ocean monument, hadn't had the materials for because it required prismarine crystals to create. First though, I had to create an item called the Botanical Brewery and hook this up to my mana pools because this was the thing that was going to actually create the Blood Pendant for me. But then it was just a matter of throwing in all the ingredients and waiting because this thing would take a little while to craft. Basically though, the way this thing works is it will give you a permanent potion effect of your choosing in exchange for a constant drain of mana. And I had decided to create a regen 2 version because I thought that'd be the most helpful potion effect for me. When it finally finished crafting though, and I threw it on to test it out, I immediately noticed that it was draining a lot of mana every second. So there was no way I was just going to be able to wear it at all times. But I could definitely use it situationally for boss fights as an added layer of protection. And for my next project, I decided to continue along those lines of making myself as overpowered as possible. And to do that, I was going to start a raid. 
because even though I had already dropped two magical eyes from evokers and didn't really need any more of those, it would still be kind of cool to just stockpile up a bunch of totems of undying just in case it ever came to a point where I needed them. But first I needed to convert that abandoned village I had found into an actual village because right now it was just a bunch of zombie villagers so I wouldn't even be able to start a raid there if I wanted to. And after walking all around the village to get a rough count, I spotted five zombie villagers in total, meaning I would need five golden apples and five potions of weakness to cure them all. I decided to target the golden apples first since I already had all the gold I would need and just needed to get five apples. And with the combination of my infinite bone meal and my extendo grip to reach tall leaves, I was able to collect five apples super quickly. So then it was time to shift my focus to those potions of weakness that would require me to have a fermented spider eye, which was going to be a bit of an issue because I currently had zero brown mushroom. My first thought was to explore those massive caves beneath my base because I had seen a lot of mushrooms down there and I assumed there would have to be a brown mushroom somewhere, right? But after a day and a half of searching, I still had not found a single brown mushroom, so I figured it was time to try out a new method. And what I did was set my greater eye of ender to search for a swamp hut, that way I would eventually hit a biome that had brown mushrooms in it. And this definitely turned out to be the correct decision because within the day I had already found some brown mushrooms. So I went back to my base, made some fermented spider eyes, and brewed those splash potions of weakness. And then I began the process of curing all the zombie villagers. Two of them were actually in the same house which made things a little bit more complicated because I had to separate them otherwise the first one that got cured would just get reinfected by the other one. I also made sure to spawn proof all of their houses after I started the curing process because I didn't just want some random zombie or something spawning in there and ruining all the hard work I had just done. And after watching the last villager be cured, I started to head back to my waystone so I could go to sleep for the night. But right as I was about to get there, I suddenly got attacked by another one of those drowned mini bosses. At this point though, I had already killed two of these things, so I was super well practiced in how to take him out. And after he was defeated, I went to look at what items he dropped and was shocked. Not only had he dropped two separate armor pieces, but he had also dropped his trident with mending already on it. So of course, the next morning I proceeded to immediately max out that trident using my soul enchanter. And now the last thing on my list to do was to get bad omens so that I could actually start the raid. And after a little bit of research, I found out that in this mod pack, you don't kill the pillager outpost leader to get the bad omen effect. Instead, all you have to do is take the banners that are found at the outpost and light those on fire. I already had two of these in one of my chests that I happened to grab the last time I visited that pillager outpost, but I wanted to get bad omen five, so I needed three more. So I headed back out into the blizzard and started looking for another outpost. This time the outpost I found actually had some pillagers there that I needed to take out. So I decided to use my trident on them to test out its strength. And as it turns out, this permanent snowstorm meant that every time I hit a mob with my trident outside, it would get struck with lightning because of the channeling enchant. So in outdoor settings, this trident had now become my most powerful weapon by far. After taking out the remaining pillagers, I grabbed all the banners I could find and headed home for the night. Then in the morning, I went to a spot away from my base so that the villager in my bunker wouldn't trigger the raid and burned all five banners for Bad Omen 5 and finally TP'd into the village to begin this raid. And the first wave immediately hit me with something that I was not expecting when one of the pillagers started throwing miniature creepers at me. But with the combination of my OP trident and netherite sword, I was able to handle this group of pillagers pretty easily. But then I noticed the bar at the top indicated there was still one pillager left somewhere, but I could not find him for the life of me. And I literally spent like four minutes walking around searching for him before I finally saw him just chilling in a random hole somewhere. Thankfully, after taking him out and starting wave two, I did not have the same problem and finished wave two super quickly. Waves three and four were more of the same with there still not being a huge number of pillagers, which made it pretty easy for me to handle. But then wave five was a totally different beast. To start, there were way more pillagers in this wave than there had been in any previous one, and a bunch of them were even decked out with diamond armor. And as if that didn't amp up the difficulty enough, there was even an evoker and a ravager in this wave. I began by using my trident to do some range damage so that I could keep my distance from the big group. Then I used my trident to take out the ravager from a distance so it couldn't get any big hits in on me. I took out the remaining pillagers that were nearby and then finished off the evoker, collecting my third totem of undying. And somehow wave 6 took things to a level I couldn't even have imagined when suddenly mid fight I was attacked by a wraith mini boss preventing me from healing for the next 30 seconds at least. 
I ran away super fast in a total panic and was luckily able to get a one-on-one -on -one fight with the wraith that made everything a lot easier. After that close encounter though, I decided to use that permanent regen 2 necklace for the rest of the fight and I was really glad I did because there were some moments where I was taking some big damage. Surprisingly, wave 7 was super tame compared to that crazy wave 6 I had just experienced, but I did end up getting 3 more totems during it, which was pretty awesome. And then it was time for the final wave. And almost immediately after running in, I started taking massive amounts of damage, so I backed off for a second and equipped my regen 2 necklace, because I could already tell I was going to need it for this whole battle. And after recovering to full HP, I was able to go back in and clear out the rest of the big group. And from that point forward, most of the remaining raiders were scattered around by themselves so I was able to go through and take each of them out individually and just like that I had completed all eight waves of this raid in total collecting nine totems and over four stacks of emeralds so I have to say I definitely think it was worth it I felt kind of bad for the villagers that their entire town had just been ravaged though so I decided as a token of my gratitude for allowing me to host the raid in their town I would spend the next couple of days fixing everything up for them because even ever since I arrived, this place has looked kind of ugly. I started out by just fixing up the exterior of the houses by replacing any mossy cobblestone with regular cobblestone, replacing the frozen wood with brand new fresh oak wood, and then just removing any cobwebs or snow that was lying around. A lot of the houses even just had straight up blocks missing in a lot of the parts though, so fixing up this whole place took me a little bit. I actually ended up discovering a couple houses with zombie villagers still in them along the way, so I decided to leave those alone for now so I wouldn't get confused on which ones had regular villagers and which ones had zombie villagers in them. I also set up a small little animal pen in the center of the town with some chickens using the eggs for my egg farm because I feel like a village just isn't complete without at least a couple animals. And then I used a bunch of my own materials to craft five cocoons and spammed emeralds on them to guarantee they spawned a villager. And finally I went around and gave the villagers some jobs that I thought could have some useful trades for me later on. As night fell though a massive zombie horde came storming into the town and I was really worried that all the villagers were gonna die and all that work I had just put in was going to be for nothing. At first, I tried to just fend off the horde by myself, but it eventually got to the point where it seemed like it was never going to end. So I TP'd out, went to sleep, and just prayed that things would be okay in the morning. And when I got back and checked on the villagers, it seemed that they were all still alive, so that was a relief for sure. I also started to trade with the cartographer villager because later on, he was going to have a very important item that I needed. But after that, I was pretty satisfied with the work I had done at this village and shifted my focus to my next project. And that project was to go blast mining for netherite. But in order to do this, I was going to need something to actually do the blast part of the blast mining. And I figured the easiest item I could get that would do that was beds. Currently though, I barely had any wool and zero sheep in my animal pen. So I was going to need to fix that. So I made seven more of those animal cocoons and placed them down in the pen, just hoping that one of them would spawn a sheep. And when they hatched, I was pleasantly surprised to find two sheep as well as a large variety of other animals. The next day, they had grown into adults so I breeded and sheared them. The unfortunate part of this whole process though is that there is a cooldown between breeding times so I was gonna have to do some waiting. I was able though to craft an item called the Lamp of Growth which would shorten the time it takes for a baby animal to grow into an adult animal. This process of breeding and shearing continued on for about another day or so before on day 276 I was comfortable with the amount of beds I had and I traveled into the nether. When I got there though I noticed that even with my adjusted cooling I was still overheating at times so I decided to brew some heat resistance potions to help keep me cooled down. But then I went back in, found a good spot to start blast mining, and placed down my first bed. And literally immediately with that first blast, found a piece of ancient debris. And if that wasn't lucky enough for you, after blowing up the next bed, I mined like two blocks ahead and found a vein of two ancient debris this time. I went on a bit of a dry streak after that, but then with my last bed of the day, I found my fourth piece of ancient debris. So I have to say that was quite the successful day of blast mining. The next day though, my luck was the complete opposite and I went through all the rest of the beds I had without finding a single piece of ancient debris. But honestly, all I really wanted to do was just get enough for one netherite ingot which I had already done the first day so I was still pretty satisfied. So I used my blast furnace to turn the debris into netherite scrap and made my netherite ingot. And since the other three pieces of my armor were already moonstone I decided I would make a pair of netherite boots to really make my setup cracked. 
So I threw my current mana steel boots into a grindstone and converted them into a book of all the enchantments. Then I crafted my pair of netherite boots, grinded up some XP levels, and applied that book of enchantments to them. And I gotta say, my new armor set was looking very decked out and overpowered, which meant that it was time to go hunting for my next custom eye the nether eye which could only be found in nether fortresses so i traveled back into the nether and after navigating my way through a basalt delta and fighting this very interesting looking creature i spotted a nether fortress on my map so i very carefully made a bridge to cross to it as i dangled over this massive pool of lava and after arriving, I checked the first chest I found, but to no avail since there was no nether eye inside. But then I spotted a second chest and ran over to open it. And inside, I found the nether eye, meaning I was now 75% of the way done with these custom eyes. And to make things even better, I saw that there was a bastion remnant nearby to this nether fortress, which is exactly what I needed for the end crystal eye. So I grabbed a piece of gold armor from my base and headed over. And right as I arrived, I spotted a piece of end crystal ore, which was a great start because I only needed four end crystal in total to make the eye. Getting extra would still be nice though because there are some pretty cool armor and tools that can be made with it as well. Apparently my gold armor was not working though because when I went to go open one of the chests I spotted here, I was immediately attacked by a piglin. And when I retaliated, like three more of his friends showed up, so I started to run back because I did not want to be knocked into the lava. Then I used my bow to take all of them out from a distance and went back to loot the chest, but it ended up not really being worth it because the chest basically had just a bunch of trash in it. And after finding another end crystal ore and mining it, I now had a total of six end crystal crystal, meaning I already had enough for the custom eye. I stayed around for a little while and continued to lose the remnant, ending up with a total of 13 end crystal, meaning I had 9 extra if I wanted to craft some of those armor pieces or tools. The next day, I even went back to search around a little bit more just to make sure I had not missed out on anything. I did end up finding some ancient debris in the process, but I didn't really need that anymore at this point, so it wasn't of too much use to me. And once I was sure there was not a single piece of useful loot left in that entire place, I headed back to my base and crafted the end crystal eye. Meaning that I was just now two custom eyes away from being able to travel to the end and take on the frozen dragon. And with my leftover end crystal, I crafted a pickaxe to replace my current mana steel pickaxe and also a hoe just because I thought it was funny. I spent day 285 just trying to max out this end crystal pickaxe to make it as good as it possibly could be, but when I went to go test it out, it honestly didn't seem like that much of an improvement, so I was a little bit disappointed. And now, for my second to last eye, I would need to acquire the Wither Eye, which, as you can probably already guess, would require me to defeat the wither. Before I could spawn the wither though, I would need to get my hands on three wither skeleton skulls. But at the last nether fortress I had visited, it didn't really seem like many wither skeletons were spawning there, so I had a bit of a different plan in order to get those. My plan was actually to use one of the mods that would allow me to spawn wither skeletons inside of my base. And while that might seem kind of inefficient at first, the summoning process actually turned out to not be super costly, so it seemed like the better alternative to me. So after gathering a decent amount of each material so that I could actually summon a decent amount of wither skeletons, I began the process. And on the first day of doing this, I dropped not only skull number one, but also skull number two. So it seemed like I had made the right decision. And the next day, I dropped the third and final skull, so I began to prep for the actual fight itself. And the main thing I did was actually enchant my silver sword with smite five. Because similarly to the drowned mini bosses, the wither is immune to fire, so I would need to find a different way to consecrate him so that he wasn't just invincible. And then on day 289, I placed down the soul sand and the wither skulls and began the fight. As the wither was charging up, I drank the strength 2 potion I had prepared before the fight and also threw on my regen 2 necklace. I got the first hit in with my silver sword, but then he flew up way too high and forced me to switch over to my trident. As the trident attempted to go back into my inventory though, I realized that all the blocks the wither had been blowing up had now filled my inventory completely with snowballs, making it way more difficult than usual to use my trident. I continued to try and use it for a little while, but after nearly losing the trident, I decided it would be better to just switch over to my bow. The problem with that though was I would still need to occasionally hit him with my silver sword to keep him consecrated. But then I realized I was being a complete moron because the extendo grip item that I had now had for nearly 200 days would obviously fix my reach problem. So I threw it on and started swinging. And from that point forward, it was totally over for this guy. My silver sword was doing way too much damage and I pretty much just deleted him out of the game. And after getting the final blow in, I went to collect the wither eye 
and then started a panic when I realized I didn't see it. For a second, I thought he hadn't dropped it and I was gonna have to fight another wither to get one, but then I realized it was just blending in with some snowballs on the ground. And just like that, there was only one more custom eye I needed to get. And this eye was actually gonna be the easiest one to get yet because I already had all the materials needed to craft it. But before I did that, I had a bit of unfinished business. Because if you remember way, way earlier when I was traveling to that Woodlands Mansion, along the way I discovered both a Cyclops Den and a Dragon's Den, and I wanted to take both of those guys out. And I decided to start with the Cyclops because I assumed he'd be a lot easier, but boy was I wrong. Because for some reason, this guy was able to just endlessly spam his attack that would launch me up into the air and drop me back down. And I started to take so much damage from this attack that I decided to just eat one of my god apples so that I didn't risk dying this late into my adventure. I eventually managed to take him out and things only got even worse when I went into his den and realized I had pretty much gotten no loot for it. And when I went back to my bunker, I realized that my netherite boots had taken quite the beating during that fight. So I spent the day getting mending on those and then grinding XP to repair them because I did not want to lose them. And then it was time to take on the dragon. So I TP'd back over to his den and woke him up. My plan to start this fight was to keep it ranged to minimize the amount of damage he could do. So I started with bow shots and then moved into using my trident to get some lightning strikes in on him as well. Once I realized that he wasn't really doing that much damage to me though, I just decided to go in with my sharp six netherite sword because I figured that would take him out pretty quickly. And only a few sword strikes later, I had slayed the dragon. Once again though, the chest loot I found at his den was pretty underwhelming but I had still gotten this really cool dragon skull out of it that I was able to hang in my chest room, so that was kind of nice. And with those two monsters now slain, it was time to get this end portal open. And to begin that process, I actually needed to head back to the village and talk to the cartographer, because he was gonna trade me a map to where the end castle was located. First though, I had to spend an entire day just doing a bunch of trades with him in order to unlock the end castle trade in the first place. When I came back the next morning though, he had the trade, so I gave him some emeralds and purchased it. After taking a peek at it though, I knew that this thing was very, very far away. But I had to get there somehow, so I started running. And then kept running, and running, and running some more. But finally, after approximately three full days of just running, I made it to the end castle, and this place was massive. I spent a little bit of time just walking around and soaking everything in though, because this build was just incredible. Eventually though, I stumbled across the portal room and knew it was time. So I headed back to my base and grabbed the materials for the final eye. And then I threw everything into a crafting table and made the powered core, which was the 12th and final custom eye. I then grabbed the other 11 custom eyes that I had collected throughout this entire 100 day journey, and of course got a good night's sleep before the big day. And on the morning of day 299, I placed all 12 of my custom eyes into the portal and then jumped in. When I arrived in the end though, I was trapped in some sort of weird end stone box. And as I began to dig my way out of it, I noticed my temperature dropping literally as far as it could, so, Apparently the end was freezing. Thankfully, I still had two cold resistance potions, so I drank one of those and it seemed to fix my issue. And as I approached the center part of the island, I spotted the frozen dragon. I knew there wasn't much point in shooting at him though until I had all of these end crystals taken out, so I started working on that. As I was building up to one of the locked in end crystals though, I suddenly got hit by the dragon and was completely frozen. And this freezing effect lasted for way longer than it had from any other mob. Thankfully, I didn't take any damage while frozen, but I was definitely gonna need to be careful of that attack from now on. And after getting back down on the ground, I noticed that it had also applied the chilled effect to me, which meant that whenever the dragon hit me, I was not gonna be able to regen for like 20 to 30 seconds at least. After taking out the final end crystal though, I began putting in some shots on the frozen dragon. I continued to get hit by some of his ice ball attacks, but the scariest part wasn't the damage it was doing. The scariest part is that they kept applying that chilled effect, which was completely preventing me from regening any hearts. When he got down low to the ground, I went in for a sword attack, but was frozen completely solid. Luckily, I broke out of it and was still able to get in a couple of good sword hits on him. I continued to fire bow shots at him for some time, eventually dropping him to about half HP. But then... I heard the sound of ice elemental spawning in, which was the last thing I wanted to hear at that time. I knew that it would make it 50 times harder to hit the ender dragon if I had these guys constantly annoying me, so I shifted my focus to taking out the ice elementals. One of them though actually managed to drop me down to one single heart because of the chilled effect from the ender dragon, forcing me to eat a golden apple. After I took out the ice elementals though, I continued to try and get some hits in on the frozen dragon 
But then the Enderman started attacking me too, dropping me to one single heart again, and I had to pop another golden apple. And to make matters even worse, the time between the Ender Dragon's attacks was getting shorter and shorter, and like 70% of the time, I was just totally frozen solid while trying to fight this thing. And one of his attacks even hit me so hard that it popped a totem. The regen effect from the totem actually put me back to a decent amount of hearts once again though, so I went back to firing shots at the dragon. I wanted to use my regen 2 necklace because obviously in this situation it'd be extremely helpful, but for some reason the end had completely drained me of all my mana, so it wasn't going to be an option. And after another wave of ice elementals spawned in and started to simultaneously attack me with the ender dragon, it popped the second totem, forcing me to pull out a third one. I had brought a total of four with me, but a couple more moments like this and I was going to be in serious trouble. But these hard hitting attacks just kept coming in and almost immediately after it popped my third totem, dropping me down to my final one. But I had managed to drop the dragon down to what looked like his last 10% of health, so I was really close to ending this thing. The dragon continued to nearly constantly freeze me, but his health was so low, I could almost taste the victory. I kept getting in as many bow shots as I possibly could in between each freezing attack, but as I ate my final enchanted golden apple, I was a bit scared that I might not make it out. His health was low though, so I just kept firing shot after shot, dropping him lower and lower each time, before finally I hit the final shot, defeating the frozen ender dragon. Even now though, I had no time to waste. I was still being attacked from mobs at every angle and even got frozen, so I jumped through the portal and left the end. The apocalyptic blizzard was finally over. But as I crawled into bed and went to sleep that night, I was transported to an entirely new world. And this place did not look welcoming. But I guess this is where I was going to be spending my next 100 days.